Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Joyce Fitzpatrick, and I have been uh, very interested in um, idea, uh, activity provision for many years. I was the activity coordinator for 150 people for 15 years, and uh, I worked around the country doing some training courses for engaging activities, uh, SUNUS as they were before, and uh, SkillNet also. Um, my interest in activities goes right back, I suppose. I was always interested in art and uh, nature in particular, nature art in particular. And uh, so when uh, I was looking for some extra work about 15 years ago, I wandered into it. Uh, I had no idea that it was going to become uh, a really big part of my, my life and my work. So um, I just want to say that uh, I think that activity provision within care homes is one of the most underrated jobs that there is. It's a very, very difficult job, really, really very difficult. Uh, sometimes it can be very lonely. Um, and uh, to be a good activity coordinator, you need to put an enormous amount of thought and planning, an enormous amount of energy. It's, uh, you know, everybody else in the nursing home might look at you and think that you don't have much to do. But in fact, you're like a swan floating on the surface and your feet are going like mad under the surface. Um, I think the reason for that is that we are expected to make people happy and mm -hmm. keep them happy. And that's hard to do. It's very easy, I think, to give a tablet to somebody or to feed them uh, or to bring them to the toilet. But to do things in a special way all day long, every day, to care for the feelings of the person and their psychological needs, that is difficult. So I want to propose that I think that there are some things that help us greatly in that regard. Um, number one, we need to have plenty of energy. There's no point going in uh, tired in the morning. You need to be well rested. Uh, what you wear is very important. How you have your hair or your bracelets, or your jewellery or whatever you're allowed to wear. What you wear, your appearance is extremely important in the job, especially if it's possible for you to wear everyday clothes rather than nursing clothes or caring clothes, if it's possible. And if not, you might have some little thing that you put over a little waistcoat with colorful bows and things on it to indicate this is a fun time. We're going to have activities now. Um, I think having a name badge on is vitally important uh, for the activity coordinator, but also for the people who take part. It makes a huge big difference if one's name is proudly presented on them like that. And uh, everybody can say, Joyce, can you hand me the pink ribbon, please? Uh, if they see my name and I will respond to that. And even a person who's very hard at hearing or has very poor sight can see my name if it's very largely uh, portrayed on me. Um, I have for many years also given the uh, participants, the residents of the nursing home, their own name. Of course, I asked them, would you like, you know, Anne-Marie, would you like to have your name there so that we, everybody will know you? And um, very often a person will say, oh yes, because uh, that is one of the big needs. So we're in a nursing home and we are very conscious of their needs. Uh, people who live in a care home in general before this pandemic at all had very specific needs, physical and psychological needs. And in a nursing home, your physical needs are well looked after. You are uh, brought to the toilet, you are fed, you are weighed, you are measured. Um, things are provided, slippers and clothes and all sorts of things. Your physical needs, your medication, that's all looked after very often, very well in most nursing homes and the medical team do a very good job. But our job as activity coordinators is to look after the full person, to really understand who this person is, to get the essence of the person and to uh, look after that. So in that regard, I just wanna mention that my mother had dementia, she had Alzheimer's for 17 years and uh, I learned an awful lot at that time. She eventually was in the Royal Hospital for a, for a while. And the first question they asked us in the Royal was, what is the essence of your mother? Go back and think about it and come in tomorrow. 
and we came in and we said, okay, our mother is the boss. That's who she is, the boss. That's the most important thing. And once they have that information, it was just amazing how careful they were to make sure she retained the power of being the boss. You know, they would always put her in charge. Uh, they would ask her advice on things. They would they they dealt with her with a certain air of respect that they couldn't have if they didn't know that that was important to her. Do you understand? Yeah. 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 There, there are many of us who hate being patronized. Oh, you're great. You're lovely. You know, we don't want that. We want people to recognize who we are and to not forget that. And when you have dementia, we need people to remind us of who we are. That's very important to remind us. Now, the name is really important. Many years ago, we had a, a lady and her name was Pearl. And she used to tell the story why her name was Pearl and all of this. You know, in French, it's Marguerite. Did you know that? You know, uh, it's very important. The name is the identity. And outside of that identity, we have needs for intellectual stimulation, emotional expression, occupation, spiritual expression, self-esteem needs, kinesthetic needs. We've got so many needs and they really are added up in the word love. People need to be loved. There's a lovely poem by E.E. E. Cummings. And did you get what you wanted from this life? Even so, I did. And what did you want? To find myself loved on this earth, beloved on this earth. That's what people want. They want to feel loved. They want to feel that when they come out in the morning, somebody says, hello, you are looking great today. You are in getting better. Your foot is healed. Your hair looks, your hair really suits you that way. They want sincerity. They want genuine support, confidence. And this goes for everybody. We can't make too much fuss of Eileen and forget Molly in the corner. We have to share it all out. So in being an activity coordinator, you have to have the key for me. You have to understand not only some of the past history of the person, their interests, their hobbies, their likes and dislikes, but you have to also understand what amount of dementia they are living with. And therefore, what is their current reality? So for many people, it's only when they see a Santa Claus, they realize, uh oh, I didn't know it was that time of year. Uh, but the Santa Claus is a, is a trigger for them to, to remind them that it's Christmas. So the activity coordinator needs to be have plenty of energy, needs to present his self or herself before people, be seen as the fun person. I am the fun person around here and uh, I am going to uh, invite you to come along, give you lots of choices like you get if you go into a, a nice hotel or a restaurant. We're going to give you lots of choices. We're not going to rush you we're going to attend to your feelings. We're going to make sure you're sitting beside somebody who's good company. And we're going to do a very simple activity that you're going to find not challenging, but it will have a good end result. So when I became an activity coordinator, the biggest mistake I made was by aiming too high, starting to get people painting and making an absolute hames of it. I'm sure you all have had the experience of doing activities that don't work. It is yeah. so frustrating. You feel your head goes red, nearly on fire. You don't know what you can do to, to deal with it. Do you know? It's a terrible, terrible feeling. Very stressful for everybody. And uh, it's not what it's about. It's not about decorating the walls in the nursing home. It's not about impressing the family. It's not about impressing the director of nursing or the owner. It's completely about how the resident feels at the end of the day, how they feel. The last thing that you're going to need is a lot of support. You're going to need support from the nursing home. You're going to have to ask for it. 
You're going to have to need get support from your own family at home that they will understand to plug in your, to charge up your device if you're not there. So when you go to work, your Bluetooth is working. You can play the music or whatever it is. You need people who will help you collect foliage and branches and, and leaves and will help you dry out cones in the house. You need support at home as well as on the job because it makes a huge difference if you have a place in your home to store your materials. And so everything that you do and it's a success, you can then roll it out another time. Now, I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures. In front of you, do you see this lovely basket with the white cyclamen plants and the cones? What I'm showing you here is a, a simple thing. It's a flower arrangement, if you like, uh, but it's also got a plant in it and cones and everything. So it's a basket, very nice at Christmas. Now, in every single activity we do, we consider number one, the needs of the resident, and number two, uh, and of course, health and safety up at the top, the needs and the wishes of each individual resident. So some people love white, they love white in their garden. So this is an arrangement. I'm going to have cyclamen and pussy willows and white flowers. You'll see it uh, later on finished off, selenium and everything. And this is how it's set up. And I have this picture to show you the cross wires. Do you see those in the middle? Yeah, yeah very 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 important that when you were making a construction be it a poster or a basket or mandarin oranges that have got little cloves in them it's very important to realize that when you go home in the evening some of your residents are going to get up and walk around with that in their hand and the worst thing that can happen is for the thing to all fall out of the basket and cause an accident would you agree yeah, they don't want that. And so uh, having everything very secure and very safe is very important. And that's why I've shown the wire. Now, the wire going over the oasis would dig into the oasis because it's obviously very soft, that green oasis. But that's why the cones are there to stop it digging into the oasis. If you don't have cones, you just put in a little branch, a little two or three inches of a branch. So the wire won't cut through the oasis and break it in two. Now I'm going on to the next picture. This is just a chain made of music and it's hanging outdoors on a silver birch tree. Very easy for the residents. Again, this ticks the box of this is uh, going to help in the manual dexterity. Person folding, using a stapler, covering the back of the staple with a little bit of masking tape to avoid injury and stringing them together. It's going to remind a person of school days, possibly, uh, or music or playing music. It's going to bring up stories. So this activity of making a paper chain ticks so many boxes. That's the finished basket as it happens there. It's got gypsophila, baby's breath, pussy willow. There's a big white shell there at the back. In front of it, there's an ivy head. There's lots of moss, ivy, all sorts of things. And this comes back to the, the garden in the nursing home. If they have a good supply of shrubs, that's very handy. But if not, we have to bring them in ourselves. Okay, these are uh, just sheets of music rolled up uh, as a decoration. These can be, uh, as these ones are about 12 inches long, or they can be small, there can be one with a little ribbon tied around it, or three or five. And this makes a wonderful decoration for the tree, for the shelf, on top of a present, anywhere. It's a wonderful, wonderful activity. It involves rolling, which is something that people can do um, who are uh, living in a, a nursing home. Rolling, folding, um, all these things are really good. This is a, a just driftwood off the beach, uh, which uh, we strung together. You start with the bottom one, you make a knot, you tie in the first stick, and then that's it. You put a knot, you put the second stick down, tie another knot. So you start at the bottom with two long pieces of ribbon or wool, whatever. Isn't that very effective? 
I find the men like this activity because we talk about fishing and the sea and um, wood and wood carving and all of that. We don't know where in the world these sticks came from. So we might use that to imagine it up. It's a festive activity. That there is just an old wreath that was in a charity shop with cones on it, absolutely covered in dust and dirt. I just put it under the tap, gave it a good scrub with the brush, dried it out, and we added every bit of rubbish we had in the bottom of the drawer. Isn't it very effective, the red yeah. the, and the, uh, uh, the cones? Red and green, of course, are complementary. Now, as you look closer, you're going to see you've got plain ribbon, tartan ribbon, ribbon with Merry Christmas. You've got peppers and all sorts of things. The um, mention here is, of course, don't let any, don't put that where anybody might ingest some of those berries. This is made out of balls of wool. I'll be able to show you this up close uh, live in a few minutes. This is balls of loose wool that I got in Recreate out in Ballymount. You can sign up there for two years. It's about 80 euro and you get mountains of material. Wallpaper books, paper, wool, ribbon and all sorts of plastic, which I'm not interested in. This is lovely because it recalls the summer. We say all the colours of the summer are there. Do you remember the roses we had? Do you remember the cornflowers? Do you remember, you know, and we look at all the colours. This is uh, a football that's covered in green um, uh, fabric. It's just felt fabric I had and uh, just tied at the neck with, with the wire. And then the little uh, dried hydrangea and bits of berries and all that is just added. Okay, this little paper decoration is, is a very interesting one. There's so many of these on the internet, so they show you how to make them. It takes an enormous amount of folding. So that would be a job that would take one person with dementia, maybe a full week to do. This is a seashell wreath that I always do at Christmas um, for, uh, I have a number of people that spend a lot of time swimming in the sea, family that love boating and swimming in the sea. And so we had the base, uh, it was just vine, a heart shaped type of thing. And uh, put the driftwood, <clears throat> the shells and the rest. Something like that can be made more Christmassy by adding little, you know, accessories. <clears throat> now we're getting onto the materials that you'll need because they're the resources. <clears throat> On the left of the picture here, you see the dried oasis, the squares and the, the cylinders and the <clears throat> globes. This dry oasis is only for use with dried flowers and I would never bring it into a nursing home. I would always bring the green oasis. Reason for that is the green oasis is suitable for fresh flowers and foliage, <clears throat> but the other one gets in the eyes. Now, charity shops are absolutely full of baskets of all shapes and sizes and all waste paper bins. <clears throat> they look very nice with a bit of dried moss on them. That moss can be found in your lawn, in your back garden or up in the mountains. It's just very loose, dry sphagnum moss, S-P-H-A-G-U-M. If you want to wire cones, uh, you can see in the picture there how to do it. You uh, insert the end of the wire in under the scale of the cone and you give the cone a sharp turnaround. And what happens is the tip of the wire gets stuck in the cone and then you just twist it around once and it will hold the cone automatically. You don't have to tie it or knot it or anything. But the thing is, when you're using wires, you must cover the end with oasis tape because it might be sharp. This is very dangerous for anyone with um, uh, diabetes. We're always looking for uh, <clears throat> fingers with diabetes. <clears throat> These are just the different ways that you can uh, use moss to cover containers in which you can then put foliage, dried flowers, paper flowers, anything you like, topiary trees, very simple. But again, I would not use the gray oasis because it gets into your eyes. It's very painful. <clears throat> There's a topiary tree. That's quite easy to do if you have the, the different uh, things cut out or the whatever. 
These are the different kinds of dry wreaths that are very nice. If you save dried grasses from the summer, you can have lovely Halloween wreaths with lovely dried flowers and dried fruits. And then you can very simply make them into Christmas wreaths by adding little bits of pine or spruce or ivy or eucalyptus. I'll show you those in a, a little bit. Okay. Uh, this is the idea of uh, dried flowers, pressing flowers. If you press flowers during the whole year, you have them at this time of the year and they can make very nice wreaths, floral wreaths and cards and decorations. Very, very nice um, uh, and can be very seasonal as well. This is the idea of making a garland, which I'll talk to you about. Uh, making a garland to hang over a wall. Uh, obviously, candles are not used in care homes. We use the the other little ones uh, that you uh, can switch on and off. This is stenciling. Um, I'm going to get to this now in a minute just to show you the examples. And this is the idea of using photographs on top of a painting. Works very, very well. This is an example of beautiful wallpaper I got from Recreate, which has hundreds of uses, of course. And let us not forget the robin. As a festive activity, we feed the birds outdoors. Paper is one of the easiest uh, things to use at this time of the year. I'm very aware at this time of pandemic um, that all of you are very challenged in what you can do. It's not just a group activity like before where everybody's sitting around a table and you can share things around. I know you have restrictions. And so I'm trying to include that in the delivery today. Is that okay? To me, the very best number one activity is collage in a nursing home. Uh, collage, uh, as you know, is just uh, sticking one piece of paper on top of another. And during the year, I find it very, very useful for uh, everything. For St. Patrick's Day, for spring, summer, autumn, winter, uh, birthdays, everything, collage. And if you have templates, and I think a lot of you got the templates by Gmail, and once you have templates such as these, uh, the idea is you never, never cut into the template. You just photocopy it or trace it. And you can use this year, next year, and time. If you cut them out and then, you know, start cutting them out, they end, they end up getting, uh, you know, yeah. wrecked around the edges. You lose the definition. So I just say, see that dove there? The ideal would be to put a white piece of paper over that hold it up like that and just trace over it so you have a copy of it or put it on carbon paper or put it through a photocopier. So you keep your template and you have all your templates all year round for yourself. So you'll have clowns and elephants and giraffes. You know, you never have to do them twice. Do you understand? So at Christmas time, we need the star. We need uh, hearts, rainbows, uh, or maybe uh, the dove. Uh, the reindeer, maybe the gingerbread man, the stocking, the angel, they're the things that we need and we use. So uh, once you have your template and you just sit down at the TV some night and you cut out lots and lots out of colored paper, white paper, anything at all, and also fabric, you can have collage. Uh, and collage means that the resident can do something that's quite simple or quite complicated. So you can have one lady, that might be the ability for one lady to, to take this piece and add it and then take the white piece and stick that down with a uh, print stick or diluted PVA glue and then the berries. There's another one, just, you know, you just cut out ordinary, all this is just white uh, photocopying paper just cut it out and uh, you stick it onto a dark background. Now, I will say something. This idea of the frosty winter scenes is very good because it says to the resident, hey, this is winter time. I must put on another jumper. You know, it's winter. I must uh, get my rug, uh, which is very important, particularly if a person is going to sit beside a window or go out in the garden for a few minutes. They're going to need to be warmly wrapped up. But um, on the subject of frost and snow and icy weather, it's a really good idea to save everything you do for January and February as well. You'll get great mileage out of it. Anything you do with white, 
you get great go out of it. Sometimes in January, we're a bit stuck and we start doing the spring flowers and all of that too early. Uh, you know, uh, I, I can say from experience that using uh, snow and ice and snowflakes and showing videos of snow falling and reindeers and the North Pole and all of that, it's lovely. It's good at Christmas, but it's also good right through January. And um, it fills up that those dark days. You know, January can be very miserable for people and very long. So um, saving things like uh, baby's breath, gypsophila, stars, and uh, all of that can, can be very useful at that time. Okay, with white paper, you can also just do this kind of scribble thing where you make a shape um, yourself and then the person goes inside the shape, copying you inside the shape. I've seen people do this with clowns, with faces, with buildings. It's a kind of mirror, mirroring the, um, uh, the direction of the uh, activity coordinator. It works out very well. Collage is lovely. Cutting out is lovely. They're the music uh, I was telling you about. These are very, very effective because they get people talking about, oh, I used to play the piano. Oh, tell us about that, Mary, you know. Oh, the nun said I was no good, you know. And you have a, you have a conversation about that. Uh, also, you can see the name of the song very often, and it might be a waltz, and it might get people talking about dancing, which is something we're not doing at the moment, I believe as well, the pandemic. Uh, all right. As I say, that idea of cutting out a simple, repeatable uh, pattern is very, very um, relaxing for uh, somebody with uh, limited cognitive ability, you know, with cognitive impairment of any kind. It's really, really uh, soothing on them. If you see a person making something like this and they put it all on one side and nothing over here, that's OK as well. Whatever they do is OK. Isn't that right? It's the doing, it's not yeah. the finished product. It's the doing of it. So uh, if you think, oh, it'd be much better if you put that one over here, you don't say that or sideways. You, you, you just let the person choose. This is the one area of freedom that the person has in their whole week. The cutting out of different shapes all year round gives infinite, infinite uh, opportunities for design infinite just amazing think of the lovely blue irises in the summer think of the daffodil actually i have a funny story about the daffodil i asked a carer who had just arrived here in ireland to cut out the daffodil i gave the shape of the daffodil the leaf and the stem but i forgot to say that the flower is yellow and so the person cut it the other way around <laughs> The leaves were yellow and the flower was green. <laughs> so you have to be <laughs> very clear about what you do. So you cut these out and when these are being stuck down, they look absolutely lovely. And of course, you can put one on top of another. And then you can also add the person's name or happy birthday or whatever it is you want to add. But the person ends up feeling that they did it themselves. That's just a little cut out thing. And it turned out to be an owl and nobody thought that that would happen. We just folded a bit of paper in a circle and we cut around. This is a person who is well able to use the scissors. And of course we have left-handed scissors and right-handed scissors. And some people can't use scissors. So we, we have to assist that. And it turned into be an owl. Isn't that great fun? <laughs> you never know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, stenciling is a wonderful paper activity as well. Uh, this came out of a biscuit box. Uh, they look like um, pressure cookers or something. <laughs> um, so this is great because when you have a stencil and you, uh, there are many of them available in Sostin Green in Dunleary, there's those shops, Sostin Green. Uh, they have many, 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 many beautiful ones available where you can do all the animals, the insects, stars, you know, fish, everything. And I would recommend that stenciling on big stones from the garden mean that you, you can have a whole collection of these done very simply where 
the resin just has to press the paint down like that with a brush. If you don't have a stenciling brush, you just get a paintbrush and cut it off. So all the bristles are the same length and you just go like that through the stencil and it turns out to be, um, you know, uh, a lovely design. Again, printing. You can get a, a potato and cut maybe a holly leaf out of the potato, a half a potato, and then into the green paint and away you go. Sponge painting is very effective, but I have seen many, many, many residents put the sponge right into their mouth many times. So we've got to be very aware of that. And then when it happens and you point it out, it causes great embarrassment. That's very difficult. You know, when you've got to get the nurse over to take the thing out of the person's mouth. Uh, that's, that's very, uh, that's something you want to avoid. Also, by the way, if something, um, comes up during the session that is kind of embarrassing and this can often happen uh, particularly with people who have frontal lobe dementia they might end up saying something that is inappropriate and uh, again you have to quickly move on keep you know don't laugh as much as you can just move on move on uh, because it can get it can get very difficult uh, you don't want those sorts of things these are fantastic three-dimensional things you can get now in in Sosten green as well and my uh, friend uh, up the road ha her mother has been putting these together so I'm actually going to give her that later today I bought it for her they're houses that just you just open them up and you have to click two or three parts together and you have a three-dimensional structure that's a wonderful uh, uh, thing that you can buy if you have a budget for that but if you don't you can get Christmas cards and you can have a front and a back okay stuck together nice card and one card will be cut almost the whole way to the top and the other one only a little bit like that and then one is placed over the other and you end up with a three-dimensional freestanding decoration that can stand on the table and it can say Merry Christmas or Mary, Patrick, Molly, whatever. Um, it, it, it's three-dimensional and it stands up on its own. And you can do this with practically anything on your template, any template you have. You can have doves in the middle of the table for Easter. At Christmas time, you can have your reindeer you just cut out two reindeers and one of them you cut and the other you slide in on the top. We can also put a string in that and have it from the ceiling and it goes around like this. Now I will say that something that is hanging from the ceiling with a bit of blue tack is one of the most effective things you can do in a dementia unit in a, a nursing home. These are uh, I got in in um, a recreate as well but you can just make these yourself you just get some kind of silver or gold paper or indeed red and green or anything you like and you just put a hole in the top with the punch you know that you have in your office or just get hold put in the top and you put a bit of string through the top a little bit of twine or invisible thread is very good and one tiny little piece of blue tack on the ceiling and if these are hanging and moving around with the light, they are very, very interesting for people to look at during the day. And every time the door opens or the window, uh, you know, a breeze comes in or somebody passes, these things spin around and they offer great um, uh, uh, distraction, great something to look at. They're, they're wonderful. Um, I would say that having these materials just in a rummage box would be very good for somebody at this time of the year. Um, and then talking a lot about we're going to wrap up things, getting people in that idea, this is Christmas. So in our rummage box, we're going to have all sorts of things. I know that one lady who loved cooking, loved to go through the baking, you know, the grease proof paper, the tin foil, the little bits that you put on top of the cake, but they were sealed in a box now. We didn't want anyone to put them in the mouth, sealed in a box, like a, a jewellery box, so the person can look at them, but not obviously uh, ingest them. Um, labels and bows and ribbons, again, that's all part of the uh, working with paper. 
But after paper, oh, there's another one, is working with crepe paper making. Um, this is one made for a birthday, uh, very effective, lovely. It takes a lot of time, mind you, to make each one of those flowers. But again, it's a beautiful thing to do. You make each petal over the top of your thumb. That's all. Get your crepe paper over the top of your thumb and put a rib uh, string around it and tie it. And then you have to put five of them together. And when you do that, the five of them turns into one flower. All right. You, then you put a center in it as well. But this is very effective. Now, I actually bought this one. This was the original one, uh, the sample. I bought this many years ago in, in a shop and, in, and it was it was 10 euro because there's a lot of work in it. But we've made this is my template. We've made this many times before. And I can tell you, this brings great joy and cheer. Can you imagine to somebody out in the summer with that on their head, you know? Wonderful, you know, or their birthday or something can be really, really effective. Wonderful. This is only a, a, a peat briquette, so it would be quite disappointing to open that. Uh, but it's lovely and heavy, so it feels like a really good present. Uh, wrapping yeah. is great. Wrapping is a finger exercise which keeps the circulation going, keeps the heart going, the heart pumping the oxygen around the body, which is what we want to be doing. And uh, it also is a, a hand to eye activity. It keeps the skill going. Uh, you know, in dementia, if we don't use it, we lose it. Particularly um, learnt muscle, you know, muscle memory. We've got to keep it fresh. I remember with my mother, as uh, she made aprons, and uh, it kept her going for many, many years, the making of aprons. I actually found the apron this morning there. Uh, for three and a half years, she was making aprons in the beginning and she got great uh, pleasure from that. You know, a person needs an occupation, something to get up in the morning from. Uh, now the mandarin orange and the cloves, some elderly people find it quite difficult to put the cloves in. So you can come along with the biro and you can mark the places and put little holes in yourself and sometimes if the mandarin or the clementine or uh, satsuma whatever it is if it's quite ripe it'll be easier now mind you it'll go rotten in a couple of days time so you have to be aware of that and not put them on the grand baby grand piano where they will make a mush you know uh, when you're also using apples and oranges and garlic in wreaths as you might be doing fresh wreaths, just remember that the apples and the oranges can go off as well. Speaking of things going off, I want to say that holly is all very good in fresh wreaths, but holly, and I know this for, from years of experience, holly doesn't take frost very well once it's off the tree. So if you make a lovely holly wreath for your front door and you get one night of frost, it'll go black. So just be aware of that. Holly will not take frost when it's off the tree, only on the tree. These hearts were just made by the same uh, idea as well. Just taking the, um, the individual pieces and gently folding them together and turning them in. Now, during the week, I did some outdoor decorating in a place. Uh, with branches and I want to tell you how to do them because it's exactly the same as this exactly the same if you want to put a lovely big heart like that out in the garden or indeed just uh, you know a wreath or uh, any, any any shape at all a big bow made out of branches all you need is long branches from your garden or somewhere else it can be um, ivy long branches of ivy it can be birch can be Cotone Aster, anything. And when you go and you're folding them like that, what you have to remember is just gently bend them like that. Okay, gently with your, your thumbs together. If your thumbs are together, it won't snap. It's the same with, with the paper and cardboard. You gently ease it in like that. And then you end up with, as I say, a heart shape or a bow shape or whatever. So here we have some wreaths. Um, different ones and, and uh, okay so we start with this one this is just made from uh, scraps of, of uh, fabric and nylon real cheap old nylon that you, you know um, but it's made just a, a, on a normal little um, you know canvas and what it is really is just a whole lot of little bits 
that are tied in knots. And residents, I find, really love tying knots and making bows and ribbons. And then somebody was able to plait. And so the little hanger is plait. I think that turned out very well. Now, of course, that can have a Santa Claus or whatever. This here is a football. And it's caught in the window here. Uh, a football. So I got the green uh, fabric and just covered it, tied the string, and then added dried hydrangea, leaves, bows, and ribbons. And that is destined to be hanging out of a tree in the garden, a big Christmas pudding type of a, uh, of a thing. I think it'll give a lot of laughter, but I won't put it out uh, until Christmas week because I don't want the rain to absolutely destroy it. That's the one I showed you on the camera earlier on, just to give you a close up of the different bits and pieces that are on it. All right. Um, in Recreate, you get a lot of recycled wool. And this one I particularly like because those colors of red, green and blue are very in fashion at the moment. If you go up to Woody's and you buy lights, if anybody has been buying Christmas lights on batteries now, these are the colors that you can get, red, green and blue together. Mind you, you have to get batteries, don't forget that. <laughs> you have to get a thing called C batteries. This here is also got that color. So that's just got a little bit of pine and cones and a few berries and a little sparkle. Sometimes people with bad sight find it very uh, good to have sparkle, it attracts them. Now this is a lovely thing. This was just made by uh, cut up Avoca scarves, handmade uh, Avoca scarves, lovely colored scarves uh, into one inch pieces. And they were made into little, we called them licorice all sorts at the time, <laughs> little rolls of things. And they were added onto a biscuit lid. And then the biscuit lid was covered with some of the scarf. I'm not mad about the hanger. I think I'm going to do away with that. Um, the residents were the ones who chose what one will we put in next? Will we put a small one in here? How will we do it? That, that went very well. We enjoyed that. These um, bowls of uh, wool, I was trying to uh, uh, show, show you early on. These are just bowls of wool that are collected in the hand. Uh, by one person then collected lovely colors all together. Then another lady wrapped them in, in wool. And then a man uh, was able to help by opening a hanger and all the individual balls were shoved onto the hanger and tied a tight. I think that's lovely and very effective. Okay, now um, that's fabric. Now I just want to get onto um, these things. Um, cutting out your templates, your hearts, your reindeers, your bells, you were sent a bell in the email there by, by Kim. And it is the bell, it is the template for this. This is just cut out of felt. And um, that was put together with a sewing machine, I can see around the edge, but many of them were glued with the glue gun. Now, a lady yesterday told us that she got a glue gun in um, uh, the tiger shop for seven euro, but I always think it's good to buy a halfway decent one. You'll have it for years. Christmas can be a very, very simple little tree that you buy for somebody like that in the shop, small accessory, or of course it can be the real thing. Robin is outside the window here because I'm feeding him. That, that kind of thing, that's very effective. Uh, if somebody wants to have their own Christmas tree, we put it in a pot with a ribbon. Just want to show you the bauble because we missed that earlier on. Those baubles are made by cutting out eight circles, eight circles, folding them in half. And then you just, with Pritt stick, you add them together. All of these things are on the internet. They're really easy to do. Can everybody see the crib here? The making of the crib, I think, is one of the most important festive activities to happen in a nursing home. Because um, for many, many of our residents, of course, the Christian Christmas is very important for them. Um, and the putting together of the crib, if you can, if it is one that you can put together, can be a very deep and meaningful experience. So every year I would take the crib out. I had a very large crib and large pieces. And we would put it on the trolley and push it around from resident to resident, asking them, what will we do with it this year? Will we go for the foliage? 
like here, this lovely uh, cupressus, or will we put pine on it, ivy, or will we put snow on it this year and moss? And everybody had their own opinion and people were able to discuss it forward and back and they felt that this was their own um, opportunity. It was lovely. Many times in a nursing home, the decorating of the tree and the rest of the place is done by the staff. And I think that's really quite sad to leave the residents out of it because it's their Christmas and it's their home. Um, so what we did was we would, I would have a huge selection of foliage uh, nearby, which I'm going to show you here now. Uh, there's wonderful things available at this time of the year. There's all the lovely evergreens and there's all these variegated greens, these beautiful, beautiful uh, foliages available. And of course these have got the great um, value of bringing the person back to their own um, home, their own back garden, their own childhood. Foliage is very, very reminiscent, reminiscent for people, uh, particularly the men. Men like to be handling foliage all year round. They really, uh, I'm not saying men, but a lot of men, a lot of women who are gardeners during their life love nothing better. This is the formium this striped green, and you can make ribbons in that so easily, you just bend it over like that and use your, your, your staple on it. You can make all sorts of stars and all sorts of things with the foliage. So gathering foliage in the garden and gathering flowers to put in, in, into your, your, this is the Selenum crispum. I think it should be planted in every nursing home in Ireland. In fact, that's what I would say. Go out and plant it this year and you'll have it from now on at Christmas time. It, it looks like jasmine, but it has no perfume. It's selenum. The last of the summer flowers are just gorgeous to be included in, in, um, uh, in your decoration, your hydrangeas. I have a hydrangea wreath there, I'm going to show you. That's the hydrangea and here it is in a wreath. And you see that you can see the colors. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Simple hydrangea. Now you have to pick hydrangea when it's right. So you take one piece and bring it in. And if it works, you can then take the rest. But if you take one in and it fades, it's not ready to be taken in. So you, you always take one piece first and then move on. Now, this is the thing you saw in the picture before uh, the, the arrangement. It has faded now because I made it four or five days ago. But the cyclamen plant just needs a good drink of water. And I'm going, I brought these lovely white flowers in to put into it later today, I'll bring it to somebody today. And we have our pussy willow and, and all of that. We have plants in the nursing home, standard plants like this one here, and they can be decorated very easily, obviously, with all sorts of themes. You can cover it in robins or stars or, you know, uh, snow it and then later on, wash the snow off it. I think uh, artificial flowers and paper flowers are just wonderful at this time of the year. There's the walking sticks that are decorated. This man uh, from Galway, he liked his, his wine color. Decorating walking sticks, walking frames and wheelchairs, wonderful. Door, entrances to doors, wonderful. And decorations can be made very simply. This is just some cut out fabric just hung there with, with the silver ribbon, really cheaply to do. But I know a woman who loves silver and those colors, so that'll be lovely for her. This is, believe it or not, a seed head from New Zealand flax. You see them growing out in the wild and it will serve as a Christmas tree for people. And this is, anybody know what those are? Anybody? I'll give you, I'll give you a, a guess. They came from this. Does anybody know what that is? Thistle. Yes, like a thistle, yeah. yeah. It's artichoke. Oh. Artichokes, yeah, they grow about eight feet tall in the garden and they give these beautiful plumes at this time of the year and they're absolutely stunning for festive decorations. Uh, I have eucalyptus here. I just want to say that it is an amazing foliage at Christmas time, but uh, if you have it, you're very lucky. If you have it in the garden, bring it in and make it into something very quickly because it does tend to, to get very dried out. In, within two or three days, it gets very crisp. 
and you can't really make it into anything. So if you're going to, these are ice cream cones <laughs> that were just made uh, for a bit of fun. Um, I was thinking of the icy season and I thought they would be a bit of fun, maybe uh, something for January or something that would go from your frosty theme in Christmas into January, ice cream cones. And they love lovely. They're very easy to do. You'd have great fun. I'll go on, Mary, have a lick of that, you know. <laughs> Humour is wonderful, wonderful to use at Christmas time, you know. Um, this is a very special piece for me. I had a very, very good friend who was um, uh, at the end of her life in Vincent's Hospital, and I brought her this. And uh, it, it was lovely because this is all she wanted at the end of her days was just Christ coming at Christmas. It was wonderful. Uh, it's very simple. And some people like simplicity at Christmas time. They don't want all the, uh, the tack. Other people love the party. That's all they want. Christmas is very different for everybody. And uh, each one of us probably would, would be good if we spend even today or tomorrow sitting down with your cup of coffee or cup of tea and saying, well, what is important for Christmas for me? You know, and making sure you do those things if and when you have the time you say well what really is important for me you know around christmas is it the religious side is it the celebration what's important uh, my husband and i went up to the radisson hotel there yesterday up in still oregon i don't know if you've been to it it's like going to hollywood or las vegas or somewhere it's just magical this magical kingdom with magnificent trees and and uh, garlands all uh, wrapped around the uh, the pillars in the dining room and uh, everything is shining and bright and light and the heat is on of course and people rushing around offering you drinks and uh, meals wonderful beautiful christmas feel and i just knew being there that it was good for my soul to be there you know that feeling that you're absorbing all of the the warmth and the heat and the celebration of it. And that's always been my wish within the nursing home um, activities is to try to make things as possible like home, homely and special for people. Um, and I will say that sometimes it's the smallest thing that makes the difference, that makes Christmas for another person. You know, sometimes a person is waiting for something and that we don't even know what they're waiting for because uh, in their um, cognitive impairment, they might be very confused. They might think they're waiting for good news or bad news or waiting for their mother or whatever. We don't know what it is, but we know that everybody responds to good feelings, good feelings, and everybody loves comfort. And um, the most important thing for us to have at Christmas is something we don't have, is time. Isn't that right? Time. So if we have time, we will find ourselves uh, being able to pay more attention to the details. You know, you're with your resident and you notice that they're very self-conscious about their hands or uh, their clothes or they're very um, agitated. And agitation is very, very difficult to deal with. I know when you're in a nursing home situation, but um, it's very easy to distract a person also and to get them to forget that, whatever is bothering them, and to move on to uh, other feelings, you know. I think that's really important. Um, many times uh, getting up to Christmas, um, I think residents can pick up all the tension that there is around. Um, they can pick up that the families are rushing and people are speaking in half sentences and they're coming and going and the door is banging the whole time. Uh, and on top of that, they have the sundowning effect that people with dementia have at the end of the day. You know that the long shadows are confusing on the floor and surfaces look wet. Shiny lino looks wet uh, and they're afraid. Uh, of stepping over lines on the floor and all those things uh, can be quite agitating. And one of the greatest things uh, I have found over the years with agitation, but uh, people in nursing homes are aware that, hey, I'm here and you're going home and I'm not going home. I'm staying here. So they need to be able to be very proud of where they live and happy with their environment. I think that's uh, really essential.
Yeah, uh, at this time with pandemic, it's a real challenge to all of you working in nursing homes and I take my hat off to you. It's very, 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 very difficult uh, for you and uh, you having to live your life and come in and act as normal as possible in extraordinary circumstances. Um, it is appalling and I hope that you will be recompensed by somebody <laughs> for us all. Um, but we can't forget that the resident is also suffering an enormous amount of isolation and confusion and fear. There's a lot of that. And uh, I think uh, next year there's going to be there are going to be programs in place. I'm certainly addressing some of these with nature, getting people out into nature, connecting with nature, trying to heal you know what's going on at the moment it is really really tough for people um and it, it, tough for their families but meanwhile um can i suggest that some of the things that produce a festive atmosphere are very simple setting an atmosphere starts the minute the, the person wakes up obviously in the morning and how they're greeted in the morning uh, terribly important. There are great, great videos on the internet on this. If any of your staff are not doing it the right way, maybe you point them to those videos. They're, they're really very short little videos to show the gentle approach to waking a person and, you know, introducing them to the day and saying, oh my God, it's another frosty day. Or, you know, I heard the sun is coming out later, this kind of thing. The way that the resident is introduced to the day the way they are handled, the pacing of the person who first meets them in the morning. You know, the best carers in the world, I think, are the ones who have the confidence to do the, the greeting of the person in the morning and tucking them in at night with great tenderness and great attention to detail. And that attention to detail can be carried through the day. You know, uh, the choosing of the clothes, the choosing of the food, um, now, as soon as the resident is out in the public area and probably surrounded by people with PPE and face masks and everything at the moment, they're going to be getting um, messages that are not very homely messages. So everything that they have around them that is uh, something that's very special to them is going to be more important than ever before. We have to make sure that Eileen's, this is Eileen's crib that Eileen must get that and we can turn the light on or the music on and we can have 30 seconds, a half a minute with Eileen settling her down and saying, I'm going to bring you a cup of tea now in a few minutes. You know, don't mind those other people. I will be here for you because a person uh, with dementia uh, uh, learns trust. They learn to trust. Who can I trust and who do I not like? And if they say, I don't want that person dressing me or whatever it very often is that that person has been unfriendly or rushed them on a previous time or in some cases you might look like the friend they don't like anymore or their cousin or something that can happen of course but the approach to the person earlier in the day and the setting up of the day the setting up of the activities of the day and uh, means that we all have something to look forward to and that is so important. So when people see, saw me in action in the nursing home, uh, they were training and they saw me, came in and saw me doing some things. They said, I was surprised at the amount of times you repeated things. And I said, that is necessary. Because sometimes the first time you say it, it doesn't get in. It can take nine or 10 seconds. If I say, oh, it's raining outside. For that message to come through, can sometimes be blocked by the next message. You know, we sometimes are not pacing ourselves correctly for people with dementia and uh, older people um, in general. So the looking forward to, and the then having an activity planned for the morning and another activity for after lunch and something for the evening is really, really a good idea. If you're the activity coordinator and you're only doing maybe three hours or two hours or a bit here and a bit there, can I say that whoever comes after you to do the game in the afternoon or the crossword or the puzzle or jigsaw or whatever it is, um, you should be talking to one another and there's a common theme that goes through 
the whole lot. If people communicate with one another, they'll say, you know, Mary's not in good form today, so just leave her alone. Don't be forcing her in, you know. That kind of communication is fantastic, really works very well if you have the support of your colleagues. And sometimes um, you have to be the good cop, bad cop as well. So um, I have seen residents and they say, I like you and I don't like her. Well, the person that they don't like has to be able to take that with a sense of humor because they say, yeah, it'll be, it'll be your turn tomorrow. OK, so you don't like me, Eileen. What did I do on you, Eileen? You know, discuss it and get the person to to say, no, I don't like that loud music you're playing because the truth will often come out. And I think a lot of our residents don't want to hear jingly, jingly, ding dong all day long at all. I think they benefit by uh, switching off television, switching off radio, switching off everything and introducing very gentle music like the snowman. Do you know the snowman? Mm. La, 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 you know, gentle, you know, songs um, and slowed down songs. You know, remember that they've got a full two weeks of this to go through yet, you know, of jingly jingly. Um, so we're looking forward to things. And then the most important thing, of course, is that the person is safe and that they're comfortable, they're warm, they're fed, they have a drink of water and they're beside it, sitting where they like to sit. Looking out in the garden has been proven to be so, so beneficial for the you know, mental well-being, and very often it doesn't happen. I think our residents should be uh, as much as possible <clears throat> looking out into a fresh green space or sitting beside a house plant at least. They've proven that the healing happens after surgery two or three times more quickly if you're looking out at a garden. If you're looking out on a green scene. <clears throat> Talking about food is something I would recommend you do in your job from now on till Christmas. Talk about food constantly. As a matter of fact, all year round, talk about food till you're nearly told to shut up. Because food is one of the greatest pleasures of life. And most of our residents are able to eat, except for the few that are peg fed. Um, and they can remember food and they can um, get into the idea of food and enjoying food and by you talking about food uh, you're talking about oh she's making lovely scones in there do you want jam on yours no you want jam you don't like jam okay um, or talking about the Christmas dinner in great detail is a wonderful activity a wonderful festive activity particularly if you have those little cookbooks around or, you know, Lidl and uh, Aldi and all those supermarkets give Marks and Spencers these wonderful things that you can look through and look at the turkey and the ham and everybody happy and all of that. They're fantastic. I think I would do that two or three times a day. Talk about food for five or ten minutes, you know. Now, you like the, George, you like the turkey, isn't it? You don't, oh, you don't like the ham. Yeah. Or oh, you love the ham. Yeah, yeah. Would you put gravy on that? It's just amazing how people love talking about food or the meal they're about to have in the nursing home today and tomorrow. And um, anything that brings pleasure to that person should be highlighted over the next two weeks. So, for example, my mother had dementia and for the first two or three years, she still remembered that she loved going to Leopardstown on Boxing Day. And so this became... The whole lead up to Christmas was, oh, have you picked the horses yet? You know, giving her a newspaper and letting her pick out different horses, even though they weren't the horses that were going to run on Stevens's day. She was still picking out horses, you know, and putting them up on the wall and deciding, mm, I don't know, you know, what will I back this year? Great fun. Other people are interested in the cooking and they want to talk about cakes and puddings and they want to look at them and they want to... Uh, look at the baking tins and they want to smell it and I think the chef should as much as possible let people stir the cake or the pudding uh, you know make a wish all that sort of thing. I used to bring in a, um, a toasting machine uh, into the nursing home where I did activities 
<clears throat> just for the, and plug it in. Just the idea of the melted, you know, melted cheese, that lovely smell of melting cheese, beautiful, uh, or melted butter. Um, I used to bring it in especially for that. But if you get freshly ground coffee, oh boy, that's one beautiful smell. So again, we're looking at the resident and we're stimulating senses because we know with dementia, God loved them. They're locked in there, you know. We, if um, I did this course in therapeutic um, horticulture last year in, in England, and it was very interesting. We were given all these different pairs of glasses to wear so that you could understand the different um, visual impairments and what it would be, uh, you know, to be like to, to be like that. So uh, if you like to put your hand in front of your face, you'll understand what macular degeneration is like, do you know, like that. Uh, it's actually very sobering to do that. Uh, and that means that when you're showing something to your resident, you know to show it to them in a certain way so that they can see it, do you know, to do this and they can gradually see it. And of course, you need a good contrast between light and dark. People need to have their glasses properly cleaned. How many residents have got food on their glasses? Come on. How many have their glasses down here when they need them up here? How many people haven't got their hearing aid properly on or on too high and it's whistling or whatever? Very important. And this is the support we need from people in the nursing home. The stimulation of the senses, the tasting, the feeding. When I, I shouldn't say feeding, but assisting mealtimes. I am appalled, appalled, appalled when I see people shoving biscuits into other people's mouths with a bare hand. I'm appalled. And many, many times I have said uh, to the carer, I'm sorry, but can I do that to you? What? What? Can I, can I put a, a biscuit in your mouth with my bare hand? No, 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 no. I just think it's appalling. You know, if somebody needs uh, a biscuit to be introduced into their mouth, at least the biscuit can be held with a lovely white serviette or tongs, or put on a, a fork or something, a little tongs, you know, it's unheard of. This, 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 this is terrible. And as you know, sometimes the sharing a meal is not done well, you know, so it's Christmas day, or it's a few days before Christmas or New Year's, and a person is having their, the main dinner of their whole year, it needs to be presented to them in a certain way and given to them in a certain way, with a lot of feeling and a lot of, you know, it's very good if they, carer is also having their dinner and sharing and as though oh isn't this lovely now this turkey is lovely isn't it Mary we have another little bit you know a person is more likely to eat when they're eating with somebody and you know taking a little drink so these all make up um, a huge amount of the festive spirit the hands-on care the tenderness the hand massage really 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 important so that gets me to YouTube. YouTube is full of short videos about excellent care, about hand massage, even without um, cream. They have magnificent seven minute video on hand massage. If you put it up on the screen in your nursing home, people will automatically start to massage their own hands. And nowadays with all this hand washing and no hand holding, it's very important that people know how to soothe themselves, you know, wrap their blanket around themselves and mind themselves. But the videos are also really good on the virtual tours. I don't know if you use those, yeah. they are fantastic. Uh, one lady I know wants to go to uh, Inchigila down in West Cork and we go to Inchigila and she walks around that village Oh, that's my local shop there. Oh, should wait till I tell you about the fellow who used to work there. You know, you hear all the stories. You can go to the cliffs of Moher. You can go up the Antrim coast. You can do, in fact, uh, there's one called Sunder, S-O-N-D-E-R, and it takes you around the whole of Ireland in six minutes. Now it's rather fast moving, but with the volume turned down, it's, it's, it's great. Flashing images of the most beautiful places in Ireland. At this time of year, my favorite one is the Christmas markets in Germany and Holland and all of these. Go to the Christmas markets. Oh boy, 
they will see all sorts of strudel and snowflakes and reindeer and oh, people in the market choosing gifts, uh, cinnamon sticks and all sorts of things. It's really, really good. Or take them to Lapland on the YouTube. Take them to Bethlehem. I don't mean, you know, well, you can go to Bethlehem, Jerusalem, or you can go to whatever. There's lots and lots of um, video footage. So I think at this time of the year, setting the festive spirit is all about knowing who I am and giving me what really makes it special for me. So if if I'm only thinking about grandkids, make sure you every day you say, now, Margaret, we have all the things ready for your grandkids. Tell Margaret that every day. Look, they're in the shelf there. Everything is ready for your grandkids. For somebody else, it might be Advent. It might be the religious aspect, you know, looking forward to, to Christmas, maybe the rosary in the morning or mass or something on the television. You know, I think the television needs to be carefully monitored. Would you agree? At this time, it's so full of fear and <laughs> all sorts of things, you know, to do with pandemic and vaccine that people don't need to be watching. And of course, then you get all the supermarkets trying to sell their stuff. So I think a gentle approach means that everybody moves towards Christmas and they get the Christmas that they want and the new year that they want. And as I say, then into January, you fall back on the snow and the ice and hibernation and winter animals and the little crocuses coming up and the snowdrops and the snowflakes. And uh, that's wonderful bring in the buds opening on the branches, you know, move, move, move the seasons on. That's our angel there. She's made from a paperback book. Now it was a very large paperback book. It was called A Man Walks Into a Bar, <laughs> a comedy kind of a book. And all I had to do was fold down the pages. That's all. See that? The page was, the page was folded down uh, one third just folded down, every single page is folded down and that was the sum total of making this thing. It is a very, very, very good activity. It's on the internet, uh, craft using paperback and you could have everybody busy doing that. Um, so this is the tree that leads to a fairy, but if I was to cut in there halfway in, I would have the trunk of the tree in the middle and I'd have a lovely Christmas tree. All I have to do is cut in each of those. Go in with the scissors, cut them in and down. Um, and you can also make a diamond hanging from the ceiling with the paperback. Now, this lady has no face because fairies are not supposed to have a face, but she has got a halo on her head <laughs> and she has uh, all her gold, of course. And she's a good luck fairy. And I brought her out to a house the other night where there was an engagement and a new baby and everything born. Uh, planned and um, they loved her. <laughs>